<laughs> hey guys, it's Tamara Bennett and I'm here tonight for a live Q&A with you guys because this is day 16 of 30 days of Facebook Live. So um, each day we've done a little something different. One night we did, uh, we cut something on the Glowforge. Another night we painted live with you guys. And um, so tonight I thought we would just change it up a little bit. I'm not gonna be painting or anything, but I'm gonna be answering all of your questions. So if you have questions about door hanger painting, door hanger business, whatever it is, I would love to help you out and answer those questions. But just one moment, my teenage son has walked in and is dancing around behind the camera. So let's bring him around. The I'm not gonna address you or talk to you to you come over here where everybody can see you what what do you need dear i love you <laughs> i love you too what do you need nothing so you just came in here to annoy me yes he starts high school on monday mm -hmm. are you excited no 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 are you nervous kind of kind of a little bit you're the low man on the totem pole yep go from being at the top in All the right. eighth grade in the middle school to being at the bottom in high school so um hey bessie I love you too, sweetie. Y'all don't get to see much of, of him these days, so I thought I'd bring him around and make him put his face on camera since he so obviously decided he wanted to be center of attention. <laughs> Rita says he's so pretty. He's a very, a very handsome young man, isn't he? It is crazy, isn't it, Lauren? I can't believe he's going to be in high school. Uh, Rita said, I just paid a few minutes ago. What do I do now? I'm assuming, Rita, that you're talking about paying for the fall double-sided door hanger workshop. For those of you who don't know, I do have a link in the video description for you guys to join us in learning to paint this double-sided door hanger. So if you have signed up for that, you should immediately receive an email from us with instructions on what to do next. If for some reason you can't find that email in your inbox or your junk folder, I want you to email um, our customer service. It's info here. I will just put it down here in the customer in, in the comments for you guys. If you need customer service, you can just email us there, and um, we will get you taken care of. Some of you guys who have like an AOL email or maybe like. Uh, some of those obscure ones, like the older ones, like Juno.com or um, Comcast.com, which Comcast is pretty big and AOL is pretty big, but I guess the older ones have been black flagging or like spam blocking some of our emails from getting to you guys. So it's real frustrating. So if you didn't receive an email from us, uh, contact us. Okay, I'm pulling up your comments here on my computer. That way I can see them a little easier because um, they go by so fast on the phone and I know I've already missed a few, so I will go back. Hey, Linda. Hey, Wanda. How is everybody tonight? We just got home from Bible study at church. Um, so I thought I'd hop on live with you guys. Let me mute my phone thing because I don't want to hear myself. Um, hey, Marie. How are you, girl? Okay, going back because I missed a question already. Uh, first question, Kendra says, please tell me the story about how you got started painting. Well, Kendra, I actually told that entire story last week sometime on one of the other days during our 30 days of Facebook Live. Um, so if I can, I will go and grab the link to that video and drop it in the comments for you. Um, but otherwise, you can find it on my YouTube channel. I've uploaded all of my Facebook Lives over there also, so you can find them easier. But it's a long story, so I hate to like retell it because it took me like 40 minutes just to tell that story last week. So definitely go watch that live if you haven't yet. Um, let's see. Karen says he will rock it in high school. Thank you for that, Karen. I think he will too. He's he's um, he's very friendly. He gets to know everybody pretty well. At least Alyssa Wilson says, is an eighth of an inch thick too thin for the wood for your door hanger? So, okay, the thing is, is these door hangers and the ones that I always paint are a minimum of a quarter inch thick. Um, I just feel like for durability purposes, you need at least that thick. But I know that like Amazon sells some wooden cutouts that are only an eighth inch thick. If it is not going to be exposed to weather, if it's going to be hanging up inside or behind like a glass uh, storm door, an eighth of an inch would probably work. If nothing else, it's a good piece to practice on because it's probably cheaper than a quarter inch thick piece. Um, you guys are saying you love my nails. I went and got my nails done today. So we got new nails going on and I did all the colors. <laughs> I chose five different colors. Um... Somebody said, where do I get the circle for the double-sided class? Um, there's a link in the, I believe, the supply list for where to go buy that, but you can get it at shopdoorhangers.com. If you can't find it, use the search bar and search for circle blank, circle blank, and it will come right up, okay? 
All right, going back through your questions, I know I've missed some. Let's talk about cutting out the circle, Princess Marie says. Do you have any tips? So um, back in the day, I used to use a pizza pan to trace. Um, so that's, you know, pretty good. You could use a pizza pan. Um, as far as getting it nice and round, I say keep your arm close to your body because the farther out your arm gets when you're using a jigsaw, the farther away it gets from your body, the less control you have. If you keep it right here, six to eight, you know, 12 inches away from your body while you're cutting and you're right over the, the, the tool, you will have a much easier time controlling where you place the blade. Also, the trick to a jigsaw is looking ahead of the cut. A lot of times we tend to focus on where exactly the blade is cutting in the wood, but if you can look three to four inches at least ahead of the cut and, and be angling toward the area you're going toward, you're gonna have a much easier time of getting a nice smooth circle. And just be aware that you can always like sand it and smooth it a little bit at the end. So if you've got a spot that's a little bumpy or it looks a little funny, just take your sander and just start working on it until it starts to look more round. And if all else fails, that's going to be where you can attach your bow and you can hide any kind of mistake. Um, let's see. Denise is looking forward to the workshop, but she's nervous. Don't be nervous, Denise. I'm going to hold your hand. It's going to be totally fine. I will walk you through this step by step. You can do this, okay? Um, Ruth says, can you show us on the computer which file you use and how to put it into the Glowforge program? I actually did that Sunday night, Ruth. So if you will go back and watch the video that I did Sunday night, you'll get to see exactly how I do that. But the file that you're going to pull out of the zip folder and upload to the Glowforge is called an SVG. Um, now some of our files for some reason have had a little bit of an error code. Um, so I showed a quick way to fix that with the Inkscape program, which is completely free. You can download it online. Don't worry, you're not going to get a virus from Inkscape. They, it's safe to download. Download Inkscape and you can follow um, this, the tips that I give you on, on that live for how to fix that error code. Um, let's see, Deborah says, question, when do you choose to do a base coat before the main color? Are we putting on a base coat with this double-sided painting treasure? I love that you called it a treasure. That was so sweet. No, no base coat. Um, we will be starting with painting this side blue and the other side we will start with painting it uh, the jewel green color. So no need to base coat anything. If you want to, you can go ahead and give it a coat of the blue or a coat of the jewel green if you want to get a head start, but there's no need to get a head start because we're going to break this down step by step each night. So we won't be moving super fast. We'll be moving super slow so that those of you who this is your first time painting, you'll be able to follow along with us step by step and you won't get behind. Okay. And no worries, if you can't watch these videos live for the workshop, you'll be able to watch them on replay for up to a year at least. So y'all have plenty of time to accomplish this project. Uh, next question. Oh, and her, she also said, when do you choose to do a base coat? I only do, and I think you're talking about like priming it, right? Like with white or something. I only do that if I'm painting really bright colors. For example, if I was going to paint a sunflower that was going to be yellow, I would base coat that with white first. Or if I was going to paint a beach ball that had a bunch of bright colors on it, white would be my base coat. So keep that in mind. Anytime you're doing bright colors, white is a good, a good base to put down so that all your colors will be brighter. Um, because sometimes the wood grain or the darkness of the wood can bring those bright colors down a little bit. Um, let's see. Next question. I'm going through these in order. I'm scrolling. Susan wants to know how long is the workshop? So it starts August 16th and goes through the 20th. It's five nights long. It'll be 7 p.m. each night except for Wednesday night, like tonight. Uh, since I have Bible study at church, we will not have the Wednesday night live until 8.30 p.m. Um, Debbie says, do you know how hard it is to find paint? Debbie, it depends where you look. So our Hobby Lobby has been fully stocked. So it just depends. And you can shop on DecoArt's website and they've been shipping stuff out within a week. It's been really fast lately. So you can use my link to go shop at DecoArt and you can use a coupon code that I have for 20% off on DecoArt's website. It is SOUTHERN20, all capital letters, SOUTHERN20. Here, I will type it in the... Southern 20 for 20% 20 off at Deco Art. Where do I get my circle for the double-sided class? Karen wants to know. You can get it at shopdoorhangers.com. Here, I will just go grab the link because that's the second time that question's been asked. I will grab the link right now. Circle blank. 
is what it's called in the shop. I will copy and paste that right in the comments for you. Whoops, I thought it was gonna be, there we go. I think I got it then. <laughs> um, okay, Kelly said I'm getting my order on Tuesday from DecoArt, good. Um, <laughs> Julie says, if I can get out of my own way, I will get into my business too. Yes, that's the problem with a lot of people is they just need to get out of their own way. So if you have questions about business, I'll be happy to answer those as well while I'm here. I do have a program called Paint to Profit which does include the Painters Clubhouse. Like once you're in Painters Clubhouse, you can upgrade it paint to paint, upgrade and add Paint to Profit at any time for just $20 more a month. You can learn more about that at paintprofit.com. Hey, Barbara. Um, let's see. Pam says, I have a question about Etsy. Do you have to have a big inventory just starting out? Pam, um, I think my friend Lauren Kilgore, who teaches how to use Etsy, I think she recommended starting out with, I want to say 20 to 30 products, simply because she said it's like your store, right? When people walk into your store, they don't want to see just one thing on the shelf or just five items on the shelf. They want you to have a fully stocked store. So that doesn't mean 100 items, but I think she recommended 20 to 30. So I would say 30 is probably a good number. So if you've got 30 photos of door hangers that you have painted before, upload those, put in really good descriptions and tags, and that should give you a good starting starting point. Um, Gwen says, will we be trying to draw the pumpkin in freehand? No, Gwen, you will definitely not. I was going to look for the template around here, but I don't have it handy. You will not have to freehand any of this. We will have a little thing you can trace using graphite paper to get the pumpkin and the turkey and the lettering all on this blank. So you won't have to freehand anything, okay? Don't worry about that part. Um, let's see. If you're a PC sister, do you sign up for free? So yes, Painters Clubhouse sisters do not have to pay for this workshop. You get access for free if you are already a Painters Clubhouse member. Um, there's instructions in the Facebook group for how to access it. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Carla got her blank today. Awesome. Um, hey, Uncle Corey. Laura makes a good point. She said, when you're cutting out circles, after they're painted, you rarely ever notice that they're not perfect circles. So just, that's kind of the way I feel about it too, Laura. Um, Nancy says, what do you use to guide painting the circles on the pumpkin background. Oh, so some of you guys were asking about these polka dots on the background and wondering if you're gonna need a sponge pouncer for those. No, I actually used a little like Dixie cup. So you're just gonna need like a, a cup, okay, to make the circles. Don't worry about buying anything fancy. Um, Amanda, the, la the last like opportunity to sign up for this is August 16th, because that's when it starts. So just be sure to sign up before then. Um, Teresa says, when you do a live teaching next week, is that the only time those days you'll be live? No, I'll be live on my public page here as well, but I'll be live in a special Facebook group for this workshop. Um, so during the day, I'll probably be live here on my page because it'll be part of the 30 days of Facebook Live, but then at night, I'll be live inside the workshop. So I'll be busy next week. <laughs> um, what do you use? Oh, I already answered that question. If we're in Painters Clubhouse and Template Club, will we have access or do we need to purchase? If you're in Painters Clubhouse, you will have access. If you're only in Template Club, you will not have access. You'll have to purchase access to this. Thank you, Jennifer. This shirt is from um, Redheaded Camel. This is her hand lettering. Um, I am a subscriber of her t-shirt club, so if you're interested in that, I can give you a link as well. Um, Laura says, my first time was the snow place like home door hanger that you did last winter. Um, she said, I loved every minute of it. You won't regret it. Just uh, wanted to pop on and say hello. Well, hello, Laura. Thank you. Um, how long will each nightly session be? Um, I, my goal is to keep them about 30 to 45 minutes, but you guys know I get to talking and sometimes they take longer. The night that we do um, the hand lettering and stuff, that may take a little longer. And then the night that we uh, work on the turkey might take a little longer because he's got more detail. So um, my goal is 30 to 45 minutes just so that it's quick for you guys to watch. If you're a faster painter, um, you know, you may appreciate a faster video. If you're a slower painter, you may want me to go a little slower. Um, Jennifer, you do not have to be an artist to do this. I'm so glad you're participating with us. Awesome. 
Uh, let's see, Vanessa says, I couldn't find true ochre in foliage green. What's some of the other colors we can use to replace those? So true ochre is just a dark yellow. So if you can find a mustard yellow, that will work. Um, as far as the foliage green, where is that one? Foliage green. I can't remember what color that is. It's, it's a green. Here it is. This might be it. Well, it, no, this it's similar to this one. So it's kind of just a light, soft green. It's not a lime green, it's just a soft green. So um, what did we use that on? Would we use it on the lettering? No. I don't think we used foliage green in this one. Is it on the list? Because <laughs> I don't see any foliage green on that one, so that's really puzzling to me. Um, Oh my goodness, Terry said, I took the week off at work to do this workshop with you. Terry, you are so committed. Awesome. You're going to have like such a great week. I'm so proud of you. Julie says, do you think it's too late to sign up? We won't have the item. So Julie, a lot of people prefer to watch live with me and then paint on their own time, like maybe the next day or whenever so that they don't feel rushed and they will re-watch the video a second time and paint so that they can pause the video and stuff like that. So even if you don't have your items in time, like maybe you just ordered your wood blank today and it's gonna be a couple days late getting there, you can always watch and, and participate live, ask questions live, and then paint on your own time and get caught up, okay? Um, what texting service do you use for your business? Cassie says, I use community, community, community.com. Charlie is coming in here. You can't be on camera, you don't have a shirt on. Go put a shirt on and then you can say hello. Hey. Well, she's ducking down. Only her head is sticking up. <laughs> I'm trying to get... Well, honey, it's up here. This is the camera right here. You see your little bitty face? You don't even have a shirt on. Hello. <laughs> okay, I'm answering questions. I need to go out. <laughs> um, let's see. Do you have to have a business license to sell on Etsy? I think you have to have a EIN number with the IRS. That's not exactly the same as a business license, but you have to have a, an IRS number. Um, oh, I need my arm. I, I, you're in the way. When's the, I already answered that. Is carbon paper different from the paper? No, it's the same thing. Tammy, carbon paper and graphite paper are the same exact thing. So if you've got one or the other, it'll be fine. Um, thank you, Yvette. Is there a stencil for the chevron? Um, no, but I'm gonna show you how to do it without a stencil. And since it's only a small little bitty era, area on the wings, it's gonna be it's gonna be a piece of cake. Will you please get out? <laughs> go out, out. Go get ready for bed, okay? I'm gonna come tuck you in in a minute. Yes, I see you on the thing. Go get ready for bed. Did the file for this include the SVG to score the 18 inch round? No, not in this particular case, Kelly, sorry. Um, Danita says, is there still time to get the blank? Um, no, I believe the deadline for that was yesterday, actually. Julie wants to know, what is Painters Clubhouse? That is my membership where I teach door hanger painting every month. Uh, we teach designs just like this in the Painters Clubhouse and we provide you with printable templates so you can cut your own wood and you can follow along with the tutorials for how to paint things like this. We teach techniques like hand lettering and um, like how to paint leopard print, how to um, make bows, how to choose your colors, all kinds of stuff like that. We've had that membership for three years now. So it actually opens up to the public August 23rd. So circle that on your calendar, August 23rd. But if you participate in our workshop, you do get invited to join early. And there's already been several of you guys who've decided to go ahead and join early. So we're excited about that. Um, and our Painters Clubhouse sisters are always excited to welcome new members. Um, but if you want to know more about it, Julie, you can find out more at paintersclubhouse.com. Julie Coleman says, how many hours do you dedicate to your business? <laughs> oh, I'm laughing, Julie, because I don't keep up with it. Um, I eat, sleep, and breathe my business. Um, so it's like, even if I'm like laying down watching Netflix, I'm probably checking messages or reading comments, resp responding to stuff. So I never keep track of it. Um, but I would say it's probably at minimum four to six hours a day, which is not bad, really. 
if, if, I, if I'm like thinking of like how long am I actively doing something that's not like multitasking like Netflix and checking comments, keep that aside. If I'm actively doing something like recording videos or going live or doing or typing something up that I have to do or designing door hangers, it's probably four to six hours a day, but I really never have kept up with it. Um... Oh, Polly, what a fun idea. She said, I've actually used marshmallows to make circles. I dip them in the paint and throw them away then when I'm done. I would have to be very careful with that or Charlie would be eating those marshmallows with the paint on them. <laughs> I am so behind on y'all's questions. Like I'm at the four, I'm, I'm back as far as four minutes ago. So I'm so sorry. I'm moving through these as quickly as I can. Um, Pam, yes, there's a supply list. It's inside the Facebook group and it's also where you, where you uh, log in to access everything. It's in your email for the workshop. Um, somebody said, Season Barfield Mabry said, I saw to get Revolution plywood, but I only saw five millimeters. So what, is that what we need? Um, it's a quarter inch thick Revolution plywood from Lowe's. That's the kind of wood that I usually buy. Deborah, these glasses are Cosmopolitan. I don't even read Cosmopolitan magazine, but they're Cosmopolitan frames. I got them at the eye doctor. I don't know. Um, Lisa would love the shirt link. Well, I will grab it for you real quick and pop it in the comments if you're interested. Let me grab it. Here it is. We're lucky I got my computer out. <laughs> Okay, Robin's saying she wants it too. Well, there it is. There's the link to uh, the Redheaded Camels T-shirt club. Um, Rose says, I wish I could do your workshop. You can, Rose. You totally can. Oh, okay, Yvette says those colors were not on the paint list. Good to know. I'm scrolling down. <laughs> no, the outline is not green, Kelly. It's yellow. Okay, Deborah says, question, talk about the lettering. <laughs> so I sense, Deborah, that you're worrying about doing the lettering on this door hanger. So this is my hand lettering, okay? But on the template, it's going to have this exact lettering. So when you trace it with the graphite paper, you can do one of two things. We'll talk about this in the workshop. You can either trace on the inside and outside of each, each line, and then paint inside the lines as if it's paint by number, right? Or you can just take your pencil or your pen and trace directly over it so that it's a single line. And then you can trace that single line with a paint pen or with like a little round tip brush, something like this. Um, and you can paint the lettering that way. And then I would advise you to make the downstrokes of those letters thicker, okay? So there's a couple different ways you can do that. On this side, um, you know, you can kind of do the same thing. Now this part right here, that would just require a little bitty like liner brush or a paint pen, a yellow paint pen to do the word happy, but it's not going to be difficult. I'm going to, I'm going to help you with that. So don't worry about it. This graphite paper makes the whole process way easier. Sherry, Sherry says, I'm in Ohio. Well, it start at eight. We are on central time. So it'll be 7 PM central most nights, except Wednesday night, it'll be 8 30 PM central. Uh, Julie wants to know how often we do this once, uh, normally we do it two times a year, but we're starting to do it once a quarter. Uh, Paulette wants to know what are the two colors used on the chevron wing of the turkey? So on the chevron wing of the turkey, there is tomato red. And then I believe what we did was take a little bit of brown and dark and darkened up the red. So we mixed colors to make that darker red. So you don't need a second red color. Terry says, I just posted my hangers to Facebook. If I get an order not close to me, what's the best way to collect the money? Terry, I would say through PayPal or Venmo. I think Facebook Messenger even has a way to send money. Um, but PayPal or Venmo is probably the safest way. Um... Sandy says, there's also white carbon paper. Will that work? Yes, it will. Um, what text priority? I already answered that one. Scrolling, scrolling. Marina wants to know, Uncle Corey, are you still watching? He's at work right now, so he really should not be watching. He should be working. 
Um, she wants to know if Uncle Corey's going to join us during the double door hanger workshop. Maybe he can do a split screen and paint along with us. Um, I don't think he will be because he'll be at work, but he does want to get on Facebook Live with me sometime during this 30 days. So maybe next weekend um, if he doesn't have to work as many hours because this last, he works nights. So this last weekend he um, he had to work Saturday night. So, and then Sunday night we, we did a puzzle together. <laughs> me, Michael, and Uncle Corey all did a puzzle together. We still didn't get it done. He picks really hard puzzles. Um... You guys are so sweet, leaving good, sweet comments about Painter's Clubhouse. I love it. Karen says, I did not receive a materials list for the class. Uh, if somebody knows where that's at in the Facebook group, can you tag Karen Marshall so that she can find it? It's in the Facebook group for the workshop, and it's also on the website. Karen, again, if you can't find it, just email customer service, info at southernadornmentsdecor.com. Um... Deborah said, I just noticed the turkey doesn't have any feet. She's sitting on them. <laughs> He's sitting on them. Uh, you can draw feet on there if you want to, though, if it bothers you. What brand of paints do you prefer? I prefer the Deco Art Americana acrylic paints, just like this. They are all matte acrylics. I do not like any kind of gloss or satin or anything like that. Tammy says, I don't have a staple gun. How can I attach the jute hanger? You can actually take a tiny little drill bit, like an eighth of an inch wide drill bit, and you can drill a hole and feed it through the hole if you like. Um, I'm trying to think if there's another way besides a staple gun. Drilling a hole is probably your next best bet. Um, you said the color list does not have tomato red. Are you sure about that? Because when we went to Hobby Lobby the other day, I pulled up the color list and I pulled tomato red off of the shelf because it was on the list that I was looking at. Paula says, what do we need to trace the dots in the pumpkin background? Probably some kind of a cup. I think I used a Dixie cup. Uh, Marina says, do you always recommend after you've transferred your design to go over the lines with a Sharpie? Not always, but sometimes I do. Um, I, if you're wondering if that's something you should do before the workshop starts, I would say no because I'm gonna recommend that nobody trace their design on the wooden round until we've painted the background, okay? So we're gonna paint the backgrounds first, then we'll trace our design on. It'll make things easier, okay? Okay, Leanne says tomato red is on the list. Good to know. So does Laura. Thank you guys and Cindy. <laughs> you guys all double checked it for me. Okay, I think I'm caught up on comments. I'm down to the last one. Uh, Latoya says, how far apart do you drill your holes on your hanger? So Latoya, the trick to that is to hold your door hanger. I keep twisting this little dude around and then I can't get it off the hook. So the trick is to hold your door hanger wherever is gonna make it hang level. Because if I hold it right here, that's not hanging level. If I hold it right here, it's not hanging level. If I hold it right here, well, that's still kind of wobbly. So you wanna space your fingers out until you have it held evenly and it can hang up without feeling like it's lopsided. Once you feel like your fingers are balanced where you're holding it, that's where you're going to drill your holes, okay? So, I mean, I can't really tell you measurement-wise how far apart because it really just depends on the design. On a circle like this, it's best if you just hold it up and try to get it nice and straight and then, you know, put your fingers on there and where your fingers are, that's where you'll drill the holes or staple in the jute string. Okay. Cindy says the list doesn't have painter's tape on it. Does it have frog tape? Frog tape is painter's tape. So you're going to need two inch wide frog tape. Mom, what is this? Uh, explain the stapling and the piece of cardboard. <coughs> what? <laughs> what, darling? What does it say? That is a letter from your preschool teacher. She said she's so excited to have you in class this year. Take it to your daddy. He said he would read it. <laughs> so I have a tiny piece of cardboard taped to the bottom of my staple gun. That is to prevent the staple gun from sitting flush against the wood when I go to staple it. It kind of gives it a little bit of a buffer between the wood and the door hanger. Now the staple does not go through the cardboard. The cardboard just keeps the stapler from sitting flat on the door hanger. So it's like a little air buffer where the staple can't like pound all the way through the staple all the way through the wood and come out on the other side. Okay, Jennifer's saying frog tape is on the list. <laughs> Y'all are so confusing. 
Um, Karen says, I don't see anything saying guides. They're at the top. So if you're on, are you on a mobile device right now, Karen? On a mobile device, in the group, like it'll say announcements, guides, events, something else and something else, discussion. Like there's these little bubbles going across like the group and you'll click on the bubbles. The one that says guides. Tammy says, would it be easier to drill the holes first so it'll be easier to make sure each side is lined up right? Mm, I would say drill the holes last because if you paint it slightly crooked and like your, maybe you paint your pumpkin on there slightly crooked and your holes are lined up, then it's not going to look right. It's going to be easier to put your holes on after it's painted. And you can prevent, um, like making the paint chip, if you put a little bit of painter's tape where on the place where you're going to drill your hole, that'll keep the, the wood from splintering or the paint from flaking. Deborah says, I like frog tape better. I am a frog fan too, Deborah. I love frog tape. Uh, any other questions? What time is it? Oh, it's actually time up. I promised Charlie I'd be off here by nine so I could go and tuck her in. Mary says, I'm sorry, where do Painters Clubhouse sign up again? On the Facebook or in the club? You just need to go into the Facebook group for Painters Clubhouse, and there's a link in the announcements tab, I believe, for how to go get in the workshop. All right, you guys. Um, Stacy said, I'm having a hard time lining up the templates. I've watched your video, but I'm, it's still not working. Are you trimming off the excess white on only one side of the part that needs to meet up? I wonder if you're trimming it off on both sides. And are you only applying the tape to one side and then lining it up and taping it down? Because I used to like try to line it up and then hover the tape over that spot and put it down. And every time the paper would shift and mess everything up. And Deborah says, go kiss that sweet baby for us. She is very spunky. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, Stacey, we will see if we can help you sort that out. Okay. If y'all have any questions, feel free to just text them to me. I'm going to put my text number in here one more time just in case you guys need it. Um, if you need customer service, you can email customer service right here. If you can't find your email or a supply list or whatever, just email us. All right. I will be live again tomorrow at some point. Okay. So be sure and text me if you want to be notified when I go live. All right. See you guys tomorrow. Good night.